last session we stopped here with domain adversarial training and the idea was you want to learn features across two domains a source domain and a target domain in such a way that those features are not going to give away information or give away the identity of the domain and for that we were using a domain classifier and these features should confuse the domain classifier this is sort of like GANs, but you are doing it in the feature space rather than in the image domain. So this has more a discriminative uh, nature to it rather than being generative because you are not generating images. And if you manage to do so, if you have featureized images that don't give away information about is this a source domain, is this a target domain, then you can do transfer learning. You can transfer your learnings for, from the source domain to the target domain and do your classification. We are going to continue along those lines and try to make things better and better. In terms of the big picture and the type of data that you are going to be exploring, we have digit adaptation. For instance, you are going to adapt from the, your source domain being MNIST and then your target domain being USPS or be a straight street view house numbers. You can do adaptation across modality. For instance, you can do adaptation from red, green, blue images to depth. And this data set we saw it before, actually we mentioned it before. Here are some of the examples in that data set or three data sets. For instance, these uh, images are coming from the Amazon website. There is a white background, and they have uh, relatively speaking high quality images. You can take those images yourself using your camera. These are gonna have some background and some background objects, or you can use your webcam. This is gonna have the lowest quality. You can use the webcam on your laptop, for instance, or any other webcam. And then you want to do adaptation. For instance, it could be the case that you, not, you do not know the labels for this data set, you know the labels for the Amazon data set, and uh, you want to ask this question without, uh, you want to know what is the corresponding label in the target domain without having labels. And as you can see, there is clear data set bias or domain shift from USPS or MNIST to a street view house number. There is clear domain shift. There is background, there is blurriness, these ones are black and white. These, these ones have colors for the Amazon products you see versus the SLR. There is domain shift. Let's write down the math for it and remind ourselves of what is the mathematical framework. You have a data set of source and target, source images and target labels. Or you have your source domain, which consists of images and labels, the corresponding labels. You have a target image or a data set of target images. You don't have the corresponding labels for them. We are going to write down either one or two neural networks, and we are going to decide which one we are going to, which route we are going to go. Let's for now keep things flexible. Let's have two neural networks, two functions that are going to extract the features or extract representations. S is for source, T is for target. These are functions. They're going to take as input either target images or source images. And you're going to write down a classifier on top of those features. And let's say you have K categories. You're doing classification between K categories. The only labels that you have are from your source domain. And this is the only place that you can write down your classific classification loss. And this is the usual maximum likelihood estimation for minimizing the negative of the log of your likelihood or cross entropy. You take a source image, featureize it, push it through your classifier. That's going to give you a probability that you want to maximize. And you want to maximize this for the correct ground truth. And you know that you know the association between XS and YS. And this summation, because this is a one hot vector, is going to turn into one of the uh, entries of this vector. C is a vector, vector of probabilities. It's a probability distribution. Okay, this was old stuff. This is uh, supervised learning. 
then we are going to have a discriminator and it's very similar to before if you featureize images in the source domain using ms if you featureize images in the target domain you want to have a discriminator telling you that this is the source that's the target first we train it and then we want to confuse it so this is going to be trained d is going to get better and better at discriminating between source and target features but then you are going to have an adversarial loss this is where you're going to train your mt your target representation or target representation function that one you are trying to confuse the discriminator so that the features of these target images look like the features of the source images and these are going to end up being universal features across source and target images okay so far so good any questions up until this point so this is this was just a review of what we covered in the last paper the only modification was now you have two neural networks two different feature extractors what can you do you can actually train these losses simultaneously one step of this one step of this one step of the other one or you can do some pre-training and do them in steps the first one is you have your source images and labels uh, train the source representation mapping along with the classifier this is the classification head on top of your feature extractor and you have all information to train that and you have enough data and you can carry that out up until the end until you're satisfied with the performance now you can freeze this uh, ms the source sienna the source feature extractor source images are going to go through the source cnn target images are going to go through the target cnn whenever you see dash lines the parameters of that neural network is freezed you can say tf that stop gradient if you are doing tensorflow or if you are doing part torch it is just detaching it so you put a uh, you stop the gradients so that these parameters don't update or you can create an a copy of your model whatever that you do you freeze those parameters and uh, now you're going to be using these two objective functions to train your discriminator this is d and your target sienna in an iterative fashion and this is adversarial adaptation and after the process is done the features that are going to come out of your target cnn are not going to give away information about images being target or source because of this adversarial objective function when it comes to testing we don't care about your source images we care about your target images you take a target image push it through your target cnn and classifier this is this classifier and then you're going to read off the class labels okay now but what is the contribution here this pre-training step is a contribution the other contributions are these systematic studies if you have a source image you can push it through the source mapping that's ms target images are going to get pushed through the target uh, representation mapping now you have two options here Sh should the models that you write be generative or discriminative we are going to see a generative model in the next slide and generative is whenever you are generating uh, images at the pixel level this is going to end up being discriminative as the name suggests then you are going to say and try to answer these questions should we tie the weights should these two neural networks have the same parameters and be the same or should they have different parameters then uh, the source discriminator and target discriminator are it's the same function so we have nothing to say there then in terms of your objective function what objective function are you going to write what type of adversarial objective function and here we are going to be able to uh, borrow ideas from the topics that we were covering when it came to dance we had all sorts of tricks and methodology that you can bring in here and then you also have a classification head so these gray boxes are the questions that the paper asks and then uh, empirically they study them gradient reversal is the previous paper that we covered the previous slide that one is a discriminative model you have a single neural network in that case ms is equal to mt and you were using a minimax type of objective function domain confusion we didn't cover it 
but it's very similar. Kogan, we are not going to cover. We're going to cover a similar paper in the next slide. That one is generative. You are not going to be sharing parameters. Your objective function is similar to GANs. And this one, adversarial discriminative domain adaptation, is actually a discriminative approach. You are doing discrimination across the feature, feature space or in the feature space. And as you can see, this is an, a GAN type of loss. Okay, so far so good. Now you can do your transfer across data set from MNIST to USPS, USPS to MNIST, street view house numbers to MNIST. If you train your classifier only on the source domain, these are gonna be your performance when you transfer to the target domain. Uh, this is similar to the type of transfer learning that we were doing before. You were, you were learning some parameters and then you were using those parameters in a downstream task. And this is without any fine tuning or anything because you cannot do fine tuning here. These are on label data. So that's the best you can do with the uh, type of transfer learning that we were using in a natural language. And this is the difference between domain adaptation and the paradigm of pre-training fine tuning. Um, gradient reversal, we covered it. Domain confusion, code GAN, and this is this method. Any questions? Was everything clear? Okay, perfect.